Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's good to be here. I opened up my Bible to 1 Timothy chapter 6. Paul is the one doing the writing here. He's writing to Timothy. Um, this is his first letter that he's writing to him. I want to start out with verse 11 and go down to uh, the end of verse 12. But thou, O man of God, he's calling him a man of God, flee these things. Well, the things that he's telling him to flee is the things that you find up in the other verses where it talks about the love of money and the coveting after. Um, it's talking about the foolish things, the hurtful things, the lust, um, all the things that, are, that God deems that is unproductive. He calls him a man of God. A man of God. That's a tribute to young Timothy. If somebody was to ever come up to me and say, Oh, man of God, I would find that very honorable. Just, just to know that somebody would take the time to even say such a thing. Flee these things the things that I had just mentioned. And then it gets into the message here. And follow after righteousness. Follow the ways of the Lord. Follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Follow his ways, his doings, his testimony, his love, his desire for man. Follow after righteousness. It, he didn't tell Timothy to follow after your own righteousness. See, a lot of people, I'm afraid that they have the, the idea that it's about our righteousness. It's not about our righteousness. It's all about his righteousness. Everything that what God wants us to do should be about what pleases the Lord. It's, it's not about man in general. It's about what pleases the Lord. What does the Lord expect in us? Does he, does the Lord want me to do this verse as well? Flee these things and follow after righteousness. Wouldn't that be pleasing unto the Lord that the Lord could say to me on that day that you was pleasing unto the Lord? And it says here, and follow after righteousness. He was telling Timothy to follow after righteousness, meaning to me that word righteousness means the word right standing with God. It's one thing to be in right standing with yourself. It's another thing to be in right standing with God. People need to understand that it's all about pleasing the Lord. It's not about our personal position. If our personal position doesn't line up with the Word of God, then that righteousness is our righteousness, and it's not the Lord's righteousness. He no, he doesn't stop there when he says follow after righteousness. He's saying also to follow after godliness. Well, any time that you following after righteousness, you're going to follow after godliness. As long as I'm not trying to be the one that is righteous, I can be godly by the fact that I know the Lord. 
And when you know the Lord, then it's not a hard thing to do to live a godly life. Now, does that mean you're going to be perfect? Some people is going to go and say, well, now, Brother Ken, you got to live a perfect life. Well, I haven't met one yet. Of all the times that the Bible says the word perfect, I have yet to run in to anybody that is perfect. I happen to know one man that will flat out tell you that he's perfect. But here's the sad part about that. He can't even see over his shoes to tie his shoestrings. His belly is is a whopper belly, but yet he'll tell you flat out that he's perfect. No, he's perfect in what he wants to believe is perfect. Because somebody told him that we're perfect. He's far from perfect. He's a human being. He makes mistakes every single day of life. The only godliness that he has is the godliness that the Lord Jesus gave him if he was ever truly born again. But I'll be honest with you, I just have to wonder sometimes if a person could be born again and feel like that they are perfect. Because the Bible says there is none good, no, not one. Just look at the word godliness there. Follow after righteousness, godliness. Follow after faith. You know what faith is? I've said it so many times, it's like a broke record. Faith is knowing that you have your next breath, but yet you can't see where your breath is. I don't see my breath. I can't look at my breath. I just hope that my breath is somewhere in this area right here. I just hope that it's around somewhere in front of my mouth within six or eight inches in front of my mouth. I want that breath, but I don't see the breath. He's talking about follow after faith. Faith is something that you can't see, but you follow after it. I don't see God. I'm looking around and I don't see God in this room. But do I follow after God? Do I follow after righteousness? Do I follow after faith? I just got finished doing a message not long ago on the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy. What is the next one? He says to follow after love. The God kind of love. There's only one kind of love. And that love is a God kind of love. It's not talking about a husband and wife love. It's talking about a godly love. That word righteousness is right standing with God. He's talking about a God kind of love. Patience. How many of us need to follow after patience? That's what Paul told Timothy to follow, follow after patience. I need more patience. I mean, I'm going to admit it. I need more patience. I think that the whole church world as a whole, that people that are born again of the Spirit of God should be able to say, you know what, Brother Ken, I need more patience too. I do. I need it myself. Patience is something that wears thin on me. I see so much garbage in religion. I see so much uh, trash. The church world is full of trash. That's not my judgment. That word righteousness meant right standing with God. How many people do you know today that are in right standing with God. That when it's time to get up and speak to the people, it's time to speak to the people by the ability of God and not by the ability of what I come up with. Here lately, since I've been making more and more of these videos, I don't use notes anymore. Because it's hard for me 
to be able to know what the message is. All I did when I come out here today is I read this verse maybe two times. And I thought to myself, you know, how much am I guilty of not having righteousness? How much am I guilty of not following after godliness and faith? What else does it say? Love and patience. Do I need more patience? Yeah. Yeah, I sure do. I need more patience. That word meekness is right here. It's also in the fruit of the Spirit. Talking about being meek. Talking about being an humble person. Do I need more humility? Do I need to sense what the Lord wants to do in my life? Um... I might make a video and I might intend the video to be able to help other people. And that is true. But I make the video to be able to help myself as well. Because before I ever send this on social media, I want to go back and, and listen and feel is, was the spirit involved in the little room out here? You don't see nothing on the walls. You don't see anything behind me. You don't see me trying to make a Hollywood production out of this. I got a two by, two by six piece of wood that is nailed to the window of this room. And I got two nails that holds the camera. And I've got two nails that holds the bottom of the camera in place. And I've got a little piece of paper to br take the brightness of the light away. This is my production room. I have two tables. I have a few Bibles. I have the the names of Jesus up here on my wall that I've used in a message before. Honestly, I just want to come out here and meet the Lord here when I come. Because if the Lord meets with me, can I say that the Lord meets with everyone else that happens to tune in on this channel? I don't want you coming here wasting your time. I don't want you coming here hearing my opinion. He's not telling Timothy Paul's opinion. Paul's not telling Timothy Paul's opinion. This is the word of God that I'm reading out of right here. He's talking about meekness. Notice what he says in verse 12. He already mentioned faith, but listen to what he says. Fight the good fight of faith. You know, genuine faith needs to be fought for. It's not going to just come like my wife would bring me a plate of food and deliver it to me out here. It's not going to be that way. Faith talking about the good fight of faith has to be desired. You have to want it. I have to want it. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of people that would go and complain and they will say, Ken, you make a video every day. Nobody wants to hear what you say. That may be true. But you know what? My job is to make the video. My job is to produce the video. My job is to listen to the video myself. My job is to post it. My job is to manufacture the ability to have a charged up phone and to come out here and deliver what is the word of God. What I'm reading to you today is the word of God. No one will, no one will accuse me of not reading the word of God. And see, when it says here, fight the good fight of faith. Faith is something that you have to fight for. Now, does the Lord want me to fight my own battle of faith? No, he's telling Timothy, you need to fight the good fight of faith. Meaning, here's what that means. Don't let nothing get in your way. If people don't like the video, they don't have to click on it. But if you happen to click on it and it blesses you, then it has done its mission. 
He told Timothy here to fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. Some people is going to go and say, well, when Paul said that, to lay hold, that means, that means what it's saying is if you don't lay hold, you're not going to get eternal life. No, well, here's what I think he was telling Timothy. Value eternal life. He didn't tell Timothy to lay hold like, I've got it now, but I can, but I can drop it. I've got my little printer right here. I've got that printer, but I can also drop it. And I can lose my salvation. There's people that will actually believe that you can lose something just because of the way Paul says it right here. Lay hold on eternal life. To me, he's talking about valuing eternal life. Do I want to lay hold on riches? I would love to have more riches, but what am I going to do with the riches? If I let go of the riches, what good is the riches if I let, if I let go of it? He's not telling Timothy to let go of salvation. He's telling Timothy to value the salvation. If you've been born again today, you ought to thank God that you got something that you can value, that you can take with you to the grave. That's what he's talking about when it says to lay hold on eternal life. Whereunto thou art also called. See, the only the person that is truly being dealt with by God is going to be saved. If the Holy Spirit don't do any conviction in this message, nobody's going to get salvation. What does he say right here? Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. I was in front of a group yesterday doing a nursing home service. A lot of people would go and say, well, Kenny, what does, what does that matter? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you what matters. Every one of them souls that was in that nursing home heard the message. But now the message is on them to do something about it. They heard the message. They heard the message that I spoke to them yesterday. I'm not with them today. My plan is to go back Monday and be back with them the following Monday. And I, Lord willing, I'm going to bring another message that they'll be able to hear. But you know what? All I can do is bring the message and introduce the message. Do I want my testimony to be right before God? That's what he's saying right here. A good profession before many witnesses. Them folks that told me when I got done that they appreciated me coming was basically a lot like telling me that the message was a good profession before many witnesses. We only had like 10 people there, but then 10 people was encouraged to believe in the Lord, believe in Jesus Christ. What is this saying right here? Whereunto thou art also called called into eternal life. I'm glad that God's given me a calling. Other people might not value it, but maybe there might be one or two that might value it. Maybe there might be just one or two that might listen to this video and they might go and say, Brother Ken, I value your message. That would be my hope. I'm certainly not out here to win a, a contest. That's not the reason why I'm here. Them 10 folks yesterday deserved the gospel. And I delivered them the benefits of the gospel. 
whereunto thou art also called, and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. That's my desire. That's your calling today. If you are listening to this, you, there must be a reason that you decided to click on this video. Does the Lord want to speak to you like he spoke to Timothy? But thou, old man of God, you, that's the first question you got to ask yourself. Are you a man of God? Or are you a believer in, in Christ? Flee these things. Follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. So really what I'm doing out here today is profession of a good witness before many witnesses. Today, if you don't know the Lord, the first thing you need to do is admit that you need the Lord. You first of all need to decide if you're a man or a woman of God. Paul was talking to this man, Timothy. Timothy was a believer. He was trying to encourage Timothy. What am I trying to do today? I'm trying to encourage you as well. I hope that this is working. If you need to talk, I've got a phone number on the website. Elderlyministry.com is the website. If you go up there and pull down the menu and look to your left, you'll see a phone number. You're welcome to dial the phone number. Uh, we can come and we can speak to you over the phone. I've got email we can use. I'm willing to do it any time, day or night. It doesn't matter. I'm here to try to help. I'd, I'd love to, to help if I could. You got an open invitation. Share the video. Subscribe to the channel. Let the video go to people that need the video. Let the Lord use you in that in that ministry. I thank y'all for watching. If I can do anything, let me know. God bless you.